As you can see, we're heading through Turpin's Flaming Mountains, heading to the ancient village of Tuyok, one of my favorite places in Xinjiang. Most people only have the opportunity to see Xinjiang, or any place for that matter, from inside a bus or inside a car, but to be able to really feel the wind, to see 360 degrees around you, that's what makes a, a bike so much fun. Xinjiang impresses me because of its variety. It's got a variety of cultures and customs that continually keep me interested. It's not just the scenery. I mean, it's the people in addition to the scenery. Well, many say it's not safe in Xinjiang. Yeah, stereotypes are a pretty powerful thing. And if all I knew about Xinjiang was what I read in the news, I'd probably be a little worried about my safety as well. But I've lived here for a number of years and I've never once felt unsafe uh, being, you know, I've even brought my family out here. My suggestion to foreign travelers, it's worth heading out here, for sure. It's not, a, it's not an extremely dangerous place, unless uh, you don't know how to ride a bicycle. <laughs> I believe curiosity is a God-given gift. It's what causes us to ask why and to discover new things. Curiosity is that's what makes us explore that which we don't understand. And really, that is what draws me to Xinjiang. There are more people groups, more ethnic customs, more undiscovered places here in this massive tract of land than I could ever dream of discovering in a single lifetime. So from here, you can actually see the mosque that's been sitting here for about a couple centuries. I mean, I've had my ups and downs here in Xinjiang, but there's no other place in the world that incites my curiosity like this place does. Yes, all of those adjectives, poor, rich, historical, modern, all of those apply to this region. And so there's plenty to explore based on just those alone. I think it's a shame that stereotypes exist, but I understand why they exist. We have to be able to try to figure, to understand something, and so often it's easier to just stick a stereotype to that. And the privilege that I've had is being able to stay here for a longer period of time, to be able to slowly break down some of those stereotypes and be able to understand a little more of the complexity that creates what we know as Xinjiang now. Uh. Ah, <laughs> They put them in, and it sounds like it's about 15 days. Xinjiang is a beauty in contradiction, I think. You can't stereotype Xinjiang very easily. It really is truly a, a blessing for me to be able to now stay here and enjoy and continue to learn more about the, uh, the culture and the people. <laughs> There's just so much that I haven't seen here. And I'm going to continue to keep exploring until, uh, you know, I'm no longer able to do so here. And, uh, you know, yeah, there are times when I really get sad to see the old town in Kashgar kind of rebuilt into something that's not quite what it used to be. Or when I hear about certain handicrafts like Uyghur paper or other things that are just starting to die out. And I understand that a lot of that's natural. It's going to happen. Um, and there's really, the only thing I can do about it personally is to try to document that. The city and then bam. There's definitely a balance of what's happening between things that are trying to be preserved and then things that are trying to be modernized either for the sake of tourism or for the sake of the e economy. So people outside of Xinjiang can see um, what they see on the news or what they've kind of grown up understanding but for somebody that has been here for a longer period of time being able to get to know the people personally to get to see a lot of the culture in its raw form not in its you know publicized form not on not on tv but to get to see it when no cameras are involved and there's a little bit of a difference there that allows you to connect and when you connect and you start to understand the culture, you really, you can break down a lot of those stereotypes. Here we are. Yep. Oh, here we are in our tent. In the beginning, blogging was, it was an outlet for me. It was an ability, a creative outlet for me to take my writing and what I was experiencing and put pen to paper or take pictures to be able to show to, to people back at home. 
And really it's just something that is, it's therapeutic for me, I guess you'd say. I'm sure there are plenty of roadblocks yet to overcome for Xinjiang, but I am betting <laughs> by setting up business, by bringing my family here, I am betting that there's a future here in Xinjiang, that there's growth, that there's gonna be growth in the tourism industry, that there's gonna be growth in the business industry, that overall Xinjiang will continue to grow and I wanna be here to see it. Well, my wife and I moved out here about 10 years ago in 2006, and we're planning to stay for as long as God continues to give us a passion to be here. What I see is, is my role in the role of Far West China is to be able to provide a balance to the narrative. To be able to allow people like myself to fall in love with this region that they probably have never heard about. That tomorrow's a 